There's two ways that your aircraft can be positioned onto an instrument approach. You can either be radar vectored by air traffic control, or you can fly the procedural approach. Let's take a look at vectored approaches first. Radar vectored approaches are more common than procedural approaches because they're usually easier for the pilot and more efficient for air traffic control. Throughout a vectored approach, air traffic control will give you headings to fly and altitudes to maintain that will position your aircraft onto the final approach. To provide these vectors, the air traffic controller uses their radar screen and gives you instructions such as Turn right, heading 270 degrees Turn left, heading 170 degrees, descend to altitude 2000 feet, base leg Turn left, heading 130 degrees, cleared ILS, runway 10 right Once you've been given a final intercept heading and you've been cleared for the approach, you simply maintain this heading and it's your job to intercept the final approach track. Sometimes controllers will include some extra information to help you with your situational awareness, such as telling you when they're turning you onto downwind or base. But they don't have to pass this information to you, so on a radar vectored approach, it's always up to you to keep situational awareness so that you can appropriately manage your speed and configure for the upcoming approach. Since the controller is using their radar screen to position you onto the approach, they need to have radar capabilities to be able to vector you onto final. If an airport doesn't have radar available, you will have to fly a procedural approach instead. Procedural approaches can be most easily described as simply doing what's written on the approach plate. Looking at this ILS at Aarhus in Denmark, we can see the procedure starts from the Tango Lima NDB. There are two tracks outbound from the Tango Lima. There's 286 degrees for category A and B aircraft, or 299 degrees for category C and D. We'll assume you're flying a Cat A aeroplane, so your track away from the NDB will be 286 degrees. There's two ways that you can start this procedural approach. You can either track to the beacon and proceed straight outbound, or you can enter the hold first and start the procedure from the hold later. Regardless of which way you start the procedure, ICAO PANS OPS DOC 8168 tells us that you have to be within 30 degrees of the outbound track in order to start the procedural approach. So that means that your track to the Tango Lima regardless of whether you're in the hold or not, must be between 256 degrees and 316 degrees. If you're not within this 60 degree cone, you would have to enter the hold or fly a course reversal or racetrack procedure first, but we'll talk about those more in the next lesson. So let's bring up the vertical diagram of this approach as well, and we'll assume you're tracking to the Tango Lima and you're arriving within this 60 degree cone at an altitude of 2,500 feet. Air traffic control have already cleared you for the ILS procedure, so on reaching the NDB, you'll turn to fly a track of 286 degrees and descend to altitude 2000 feet. Once you've reached a DME distance of 8.7 from the Alpha Alpha Romeo, you'll commence a left turn to intercept the ILS. This turn will never perfectly look the way it does on the plate. If you've got a strong wind from the north, you might find your turn becomes even bigger than what's drawn on the plate, and you would need to continue the turn to intercept the ILS from the other side. On the other hand, if you had a strong wind from the south, you'd expect this turn would be tiny, and you'd need to roll wings level before finishing the turn, and fly an intercept heading to get yourself onto the approach. Once you've intercepted the final approach, you'll keep tracking the localizer, waiting for the glide slope to move towards centered, then start your descent along the ILS. So that's a normal procedural approach, and you can expect to fly one during your EASA or UK instrument rating test. But before we go, we've got one last type of procedural approach to have a look at, and that's the alternate procedure. Some approaches include an alternate procedure, which might be your only option at certain times. For example, this ILS approach at Leeds Airport in the UK has an alternate procedure that you can fly from the hold. If we take a bit of a closer look, we can see the inbound leg of the hold is 138 degrees, and the outbound track for the procedural approach is 330 degrees. So if you're already in the hold, and you're tracking inbound on 138 degrees, you're well outside the 60 degree cone from which you can commence the procedural approach. There's no procedural turn to transition from the hold to the outbound leg, so in this case, the only way that you can fly a procedural approach from the hold is by flying the alternate procedure. This alternate procedure is quite straightforward. From the Lima Bravo Alpha NDB, you make a left turn and fly the outbound leg of the hold as normal. At the end of your hold outbound timing, you would then extend the outbound leg of the hold to D7 from the India Lima Bravo Foxtrot, descending to altitude 2,600 feet. From there, turn left to intercept the localizer and fly the ILS approach. 
So that's it for procedural and vectored approaches. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe as it really helps us to spread the word and reach more people. This video is a sample taken from our instrument rating preparation course for EASA and UK student pilots. If you want to know more about our course, you can check it out on clearflight.co.uk.